Good day everyone, my name is Erwin Miglaway Valiana and today I will be discussing the Python tube, incompressible flow, compressible flow, and the supersonic flow. Okay. So let's proceed. So, so Python tube. Uh, so if any of you have seen an actual aircraft, you may or may have not noticed uh, the long pole at the side of the aircraft. That is called the Python tube. Yeah. So what are pitot tubes? Okay. Pitot tubes are used to measure airspeed. And when discussing the basic concept of the pitot tube, we will, be, we will be able to determine the expression of velocity of flow in any point in the pipe. Okay. Uh, the pitot tube is also the measurement for flow velocity. Okay. So I have a little demonstration para magets natin kung paano nag-work ang pitot tube. So, for example, just think of this as a pipe with a free-flowing fluid. Let's call that fluid the dynamic fluid. Okay? So, gusto natin uh, i-measure yung or makuha yung static pressure. And we do that by measuring the height. How do we measure the height? For example, we use a uh, piezometric tube yeah. If you use the piezometric tube, yeah, makakuha natin yung static pressure. Yeah. It doesn't matter if meron pang isa at a different area or location. The result would be the same. The height would be the same because it is static na. So, hindi nga yun change So, paano ba natin yung makikipa-iiba? So, uh, pag nalagay tayo ng Pipe tube, dito. Yan. Yan. When the fluid enters uh, the pipe tube, um, the velocity of the fluid particles is turned into zero. Okay, and then it is converted into dynamic pressure. Okay, so kung dito sa piezometric tube static na yan, yan ang just static sa pitot tube, meron din static, di ba? Pero, yung extra nga nun is called the dynamic pressure. So, may, may relative, may visible difference compared sa piezometric tube. Yan. And that is called the dynamic pressure. Okay. Pag nakuna natin yan, itong dalawang to, we would, would find the stagnation pressure. Ano nga ba ang stagnation pressure? It is the sum of the static pressure and the dynamic pressure. In yung sum nun is the stagnation pressure. Okay, let's proceed to compressible flow. So, what is compressible flow? Compressible flow, sa compressible flow, the density niya is not constant. So, from the word compressible, Pwede pa makompress. So, pwede pa mag-change ang density niya. It is usually gas because all gas can, are compressible. Okay. So, Mach number is um, greater than 0 0.3. Density and volume can change when applied with force. So, ang example dito is merong piston sa loob ng may gas. So, pwede siyang ma-compress further until ma-reach na yung point na hindi na pwede. Okay. So, when does it occur? Compressible flow happens when the fluid density varies with its pressure. Yan. Next is incompressible flow. So, unlike compressible flow, incompressible flow has a constant density. So, density change in a fluid is insignificant and water can be a good example. Okay. So, kanina sa compressible flow, Na example natin is gas. So, sa piston naman ngayon, sa loob niya mayroong water. So, uh, hindi na siya makakompress, di ba? If there is a chance that you can compress it, uh, the result would be so little that it, it is often disregarded na. Kaya, di ba? When can it occur? Fluids that flow less than max 0 0.3 can be considered as an incompressible flow. Yeah. Next is the supersonic flow. 
So what is the supersonic flow? It is formulated by Ernst Mach. Yeah. It is the flow that has velocity greater than the speed of sound. Okay. And here, Mach number is greater than 1.2 but less than 3.0. The flow has a shock wave appearance. Yeah. So when does it occur? Supersonic flow happens when the surrounding flow field is above acoustic speed. So how do we attain the acoustic speed and how, how do we get the supersonic flow? This flow can only occur when it passes through a duct with a minimum area or sonic throw. Okay, that sums up my presentation and thank you. So ngayon, tingnan naman natin ang ating equation sa ating um, time flow measurement or speed measurement. So, ginagamit nito natin dito ay pitosatic tube. So, pitosatic tube, pwede na sa wing, pwede na sa nose, pwede na sa fuselage as long as walang um, disturbances or uh, obstructions pag measure na ating airflow. So, ang pitosatic probe ay merong pito probe at static orifice. So, ang pito probe na may measure niya ang total pressure, static orifice, static pressure o kung anong nararamdaman ng aircraft, pressure na nararamdaman ng aircraft during flight. So, ang principal ng pito tube, Pinapatigil niya isentropic lang airflow. Isentropic meaning na no heat exchange and uh, friction is negligible at point A. So yung C natin, sabihan nito yung point 1 at ito yung point 2. Ang gamitan sa incompressible flow ay ang Bernoulli's equation. Since uh, uh, velocity is 0 at point 2, ito yung velocity natin, gawin natin VO, magiging 0 siya, makancel na din to. So mawawala yung equation na to, magiging ganito na lang ating equation. Isolate velocity para makuha ang ganitong uh, formula. Papansin nyo na PO minus P1, ito yung um, pressure difference na measure ng ating pitosatic probe. So, meron tayong dalawa. Meron tayong true at uh, equivalent uh, velocity. So, ang ating true velocity, gumagamit syempre ng true density o yung kung anong uh, actual density na lang ng ating aircraft. Pero nga, since mabago-bago ang uh, ating altitude, ating conditions, eh, mahirap hanapin ng true velocity kaya minsan ginagamit ay ang um, equivalent velocity ang gumagamit ng standard uh, sea level uh, density or ano yun, yung 002377 uh, slugs per feet cube kaya 1.225 kilograms meter cube so ito yung ating equivalent velocity so punta naman tayo sa compressible flow gagamit natin dito ay energy equation so si sa incompressible since um Mach number is less than 0.3 at less than velocity. Yung velocity niya less than 100 meters per second. Siya may gamit tayong Bernoulli's equation. So dito dahil mataas na sa 0.3, mataas na din yung 100 meters per, mataas na sa 100 meters per second yung velocity. Gagamit natin ang energy equation na nare-relate ang mga isotropic relations. So at velocity again, 0.2 is equal to 0. Mawawala to. Makuha natin to. At ang una natin gagawin dito ay kunin muna natin ang ratio ng temperature natin. So sabihin ko mamaya kung bakit gagawin muna yun. So yan, ratio ng temperature, isolate natin, maging ganito. So para lang sa CP, ang CP natin is equal to KR over K minus 1, di ba? So sub natin, maging ganito ang ating um, formula. So meron tayong KR dito, sa nyo mahita. Siyempre sa formula ng speed of sound. I-square lang natin to para malawala yung radical sign na to. Uh, Mayayang ganyan, ang square root, ngayon ganyan, a squared. So, ilagay natin yung a squared dito. Ngayon ganyan siya. Papansin nyo na mayroong VO, uh, V over A. So, yung formula ng Mach number ay V over A. So, meron, ka, meron tayong Mach number sa ating equation. So, sinasabi nito, ang Mach number ay uh, relevant na or uh, importante na kapag pinag-uusapan na ang uh, compressible flow. So, bakit nga ba um, ratio kinuha natin? Kasi nga ang I think isoentropic uh, relationships ay uh, in terms of ratio. Ratio ng temperature, density, ratio ng pressure, mga ganun. So, ang uh, um, focus ang tayo dito sa pressure. Okay? So, sabihin natin ang pressure dito. So, magkakaroon lang to ng exponent na k over k minus 1. So, ang Mach number nito, ganyan, ay ilalabas natin. Tapos, since ang Mach number ay v over a, uh, itira natin yung v dito sa um, side na to at yung ilipa natin dito. So, ito na yung magiging uh, working equation ng ating compressible flow. Pero, papansin nyo, nasa ratio pa rin, ratio ng pressure. Eh, ang ating pitostatic tube ay hindi niya kinukuha yung ratio, kinukuha niya yung 
pressure difference, iba sabi ko nung una. Kaya, i-rearrange muna natin to para maging ganito ang ating kinakalabasan na um, uh, formula. So, dito sa true velocity, kung magamit tayo ng true uh, speed of sound, yung sabihin, kaya yung speed of sound ay uh, nakadepend o nag-relate nyo yung temperature, di ba? Relationship with temperature. Eh, pero nga, babago-bago nga ang ating conditions dahil babago-bago ang ating altitude. So, medyo mahirap hanapin yung actual temperature sa nakasurround sa aircraft. So, ang, min, ang ginagamit natin minsan ay ang uh, calibrated velocity na gumagamit ng standard sea level na uh, speed of sound at standard sea level na pressure. At tapos mapapansin nyo na meron tayo pressure difference dito na uh, na may measure o na minimeasure ng ating pitot-static probe. So, ito na yung um, mga formula para sa ating compressible flow. Hello everyone, I'm Kenneth Gabriel Ramos Samosa, and I'm here to discuss about supersonic flows. Supersonic flow, it is a flow that has velocities greater than the speed of sound, or Mach number of value greater than 1, or it can be approximately greater than the velocity of 343.2 meter per second in standard sea level conditions. The notable characteristic of this flow is the appearance of shock waves, as you can see in the bottom right corner. Shock waves. These are regions in the gas or fluid where its properties undergo a large amount of change. These waves are propagated away in all directions and causes a loud sound that absorbers hear called sonic boom. Characteristics of supersonic flows Flow property changes across a shock wave and in the right here you can see two diagrams. This diagram represents the air flowing through a pitot tube. As you can see, as the air passes through the shock wave, it changes its properties like the Mach number decreases, the static pressure increases, static temperature increases, flow velocity decreases, total pressure decreases, and total temperature stays the same. Properties of supersonic flows Shock waves are nine isentropic processes which complicate the computation as we saw in the previous slide. The total pressure before the shock wave is different to the total pressure after the shock wave. There are different stagnation readings in the pitot tube on before and after the shock waves. The Rayleigh pitot tube formula is used to relate the stagnation pressure after the shock wave, static pressure on the aircraft surface, and the free stream Mach number. And here is the Rayleigh pitot tube formula. The altimeter on a low-speed piper as thick reads 8,000 feet. A pitot tube mounted on the wing tip measures a pressure of 1,650 pound force per feet squared. If the outside air temperature is 500 degree wrong kind, what is the true velocity of the airplane? What is the equivalent airspeed? The problem says that if the if piper as thick is flying, at pressure altitude of 8,000 feet, with a total pressure measured in pitot tube of 1,650 pound force per feet squared, and with temperature at 800 feet of 500 degree on kind, what is the true velocity and the true and the equivalent velocity? Note that the difference between the two is that the true airspeed is the actual speed of the aircraft. Well, equivalent airspeed is the velocity that result from assuming the density is in sea level because there are instances in a flight that the density is difficult to measure. Our for formulas to be used to is from the true velocity formula, this one, and from the equivalent velocity formula, this one. These two are derived from Bernoulli equation. As we notice, we have two unknown value, the pressure and density at 8,000 feet. Therefore, our first step is to find the ambient or static pressure at 8,000 feet. 
Since a direct reading from the altimeter gives us the pressure altitude of 8,000 feet, we can use the gradient formula of pressure. So from the gradient formula, we have inputting a value, we have and solving through a calculator, we have pressure at 8,000 feet equals 1,572.281552 pound first per feet squared. Our second step is to find the density at 8,000 feet. In this situation, we can't use the gradient formula of density because we have no given density altitude. However, since we have pressure at 8,000 feet, we can use the equation of state. So from the equation of state formula, we have in putting the value we have and solving through calculator we have density at 8000 feet equals 0.0018329496 slag per feet cube now that we have pre we have the pressure and density at 8000 feet we cannot solve for the true velocity from the true velocity formula we have in putting the value we have and solving through and solving for the unit for feet per seconds we have and solving through the true velocity through a calculator is 291.20698852333 feet per second and our step step four is to solve for the equivalent velocity from the formula of equivalent velocity we have And putting the value we have and solving through a calculator, we have equivalent velocity is 255.7186859305 feet per second. Therefore, the Piper Aztec flying at an altitude of 8000 feet have true, have true airspeed of 291.206988533 feet per second and simultaneously have equivalent airspeed of 255.71868593.05 feet per second. Um, that's all. Thank you for listening. So a high-speed aircraft, meaning compressible, flies at an altitude of 10 kilometers, which is in the gradient layer. So we are asked to calculate the true airspeed and the calibrated airspeed when the pressure measured on the pitot tube is 90,000 pascals and the ambient temperature is 370 Kelvin. So we have our given right here. So we're asked to find the true airspeed and the calibrated airspeed. So first, what we need to do is find the pressure at 10 kilometers. So using the gradient layer, since we did establish that the gradient, we are in the gradient layer, using the gradient layer formula, we can find the pressure at 10 kilometers, even if we do not have the temperature at 10 kilometers by using the formula, which is T is equals to TO plus lapse rate height. So this will make our formula, formula turn out into what we see on the screen. So now we just transpose this to the other side and multiply, and we will we will come up with an answer of twenty six thousand four hundred nine. Now we use that as a. We use that in the formula over here for our true airspeed. And since the formula for true airspeed requires the speed of sound, we can get the speed of sound by using the square root of KRT. So we plot in the uh, the values and remove uh, for the units. This is how I cancel them out. So joules over kilogram times Kelvin times Kelvin. We cancel both of that out. Joules becomes Newton times meter and Newton becomes kilogram times meter per second squared which cancels out both kilograms and makes it meters squared per second squared. This makes it so that um, this becomes meters per second because the values of this are inside a square root. Now if we plot all of those values inside the formula of true airspeed, we receive an answer of 558.494493 pascals. And the same, the process is almost the same for the um, calibrated airspeed. Um, what we need to do here is get the SSLC of the speed of sound and since we already know the SSLC of pressure and all of these values such as the 
pressure for the pitot tube and the pressure at 10 kilometers. Uh, we can just plot in the values after solving the SSLC for speed of sound. So the values of the speed of sound are of SSLC of speed of sound. We use the values of the temperature at standard sea level condition, which leads us to 340.3159736 meters per second. So we put that as C. And now the calibrated airspeed formula as stated here, we can substitute the values for 2C squared over 1.4 minus 1 times 90,000 pascals minus A pascals over 101325 pascals plus 1. This cancels out pascals which leads us to just meters per meter squared per second squared since it is squared, which square root leads it to meters per second. And if we input this in the calculator, we are given the 294.0539696 meters per second. Now we can tell that it is in fact a compressible a compressible flow question because it is uh, the velocity of both the calibra calibrated airspeed and the true airspeed is greater than 100 meters per second.